hello hello my friends and family welcome back and happy new year thank you for coming back uh you're still there <laughs> to my youtube channel so so blessed with glenda so so um it's been a couple of weeks i hope you guys have had a nice holiday season a nice safe and happy holiday season with your family and friends uh hope everybody's doing well I will say thank God I am doing better. Uh, I did contract COVID. I thought I, you know, I was trying to stay away and stay safe and over the holiday, uh, it still got me, you know, uh, my entire family actually. So, uh, but I thank God that we are all well. Uh, it uh, did hit some harder than others. Um, but to God be the glory, we all pulled through it, and we are back feeling at our best, um, and God is a, still a healer, so I'm so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, yeah, so, but anyway, I had a wonderful holiday, and again, Happy New Year to everyone. So, I uh, decided to go back a little bit um, and just bring out my trusty girl here. Y'all remember her, Sarah Young. Um, I haven't read from her in a while to you guys. And uh, I thought, you know, what a good way to start out the new year on my channel. But bring back Miss Sarah Young and all of her uh, wonderful wisdom that she provides in this book. So, yeah, I'm going to give us a little bit of that. But before we do, let's go ahead and let's give God what's due him. Father God, we just come to say thank you again. Thank you for another new year, Lord God. Lord, there are so many that didn't make it into the new year. And Lord, we ask prayer for those that have lost loved ones, oh God, in last year. And we pray for their strength, oh God, as they continue to strive to embrace this new year without the loved ones uh, being here with them. We ask for your comfort. And Lord, we ask that you would to bless your people in this new year, oh God. Save souls, oh God. Heal, touch, and deliver everywhere all across this land, God. With this coronavirus still running rampant, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would to just save and deliver many of those that are still fighting this, this virus, oh God. And we ask that you would to bring them out, oh God. Bring them home from the hospital. Lord, we also ask that you would strengthen those that are on the front lines, that are helping, oh God, and that are fighting uh those or that are helping those that are fighting this disease lord we ask that you would to give them strength comfort their families their members everybody oh god that's doing their part we know that you're able oh god and father god now as we get ready to go into some encouraging words ask that you would the people that are watching this video that you would touch them wherever they may be mind body and soul and save somebody as always oh god through your word through your spirit in your son jesus name we thank you and we say amen all right guys um so this topic uh from this um book i'm going to be reading today is called come to me and i think i may have shared it last year but all this stuff a refresher is always good right and the scriptures that i'm going to um give you that you can at your leisure uh go back and read them um, is based out of Luke chapter 1 verse 37, Ephesians chapter 3 verses 20 through 21, and Psalms chapter 23 verses 1 through 4. So um, you can go back and read those scriptures at your leisure, but go, I'm going to go ahead and read what she has here. And it's called, Come to Me. Uh, Come to me with all your weaknesses, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Rest in the comfort of my presence. Remembering that nothing is impossible with me. Pry your mind away from your problems so you can focus your attention on me. Recall that I am able to do immeasurably more than all you ask or imagine. Instead of trying to direct me to do this and to do that, seek to attune yourself to what I am already doing. When anxiety attempts to wedge its way into your thoughts, remind yourself that I am your shepherd. The bottom line is this. 
that I am taking care of you. Therefore, you needn't be afraid of anything. Rather than trying to maintain control over your life, abandon yourself to my will. Though this may feel frightening and even dangerous, the safest place to be is in my will. I love this passage that she wrote. Um, and the couple of things I highlighted in there was this um, one thing. Pry your mind away from your problems so you can focus your attention on me. Isn't it something how when we face problems, it's so hard to not worry about it. It's so hard to not focus on it because it's like it's right in your face. It's surrounding you. It's there all the time, right? And it's just so hard for you to think about anything else. This is something that is going to take intentional will, right? Um, you have to just say it and speak it out of your mouth, actually, and say, Lord, your will be done. Sometimes, and I'm telling you things that I've had to do myself. Lord, your will be done. Lord, your will be done. Lord, your will be done. And the other part that I highlighted down here was, um, rather than trying to maintain control over your life, we're trying to fix things, right? We can try to fix problems. We can try to, uh, you know, make ways for it to work out. Instead of just allowing God to, you know, do what he did, do what he does best. And that's work out our problems, right? There's a song that I believe Shirley Caesar sang. Forgot the name of the song title, but in the lyrics, she says, um, stop telling God about your problems and start telling your problems about your God, right? So that's what we have to purpose in our heart to do, um, that when we're facing trials, when we're facing troubles, you know, it, it's easier said than done, right? We can say it, but we can also do it in, in one step at a time, right? Maybe one prayer at a time, you know, one, one scripture at a time. But, you know, the Bible tells us that in the, in the tongue, the power of death and life lies in our tongue. So that's one scripture. If you can just find one scripture that you can, that you can use to help get you through that hard time where it's taking your focus off of the problem and it's putting it now on God and it's turning your focus to God. After a while, when you keep practicing that, it becomes a part of you. And then it becomes easy because the word of God says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Take his way upon you. Take his will upon you. His will is for us to cast our cares on him. So yeah, so we need to do that. So rather than put my focus on my problems, let me take my focus off my problem. And intentionally, when I say intentionally, yeah, that means that problem is going to be right there. When you take your mind off of it, two minutes later, it's going to be right back there. That's okay. Revert. You turn your mind right back. Turn right back and say, oh, no, we're not thinking about, we're not worrying about no problem. Lord, you got it. Another two minutes, it's going to come right back. That's okay. Lord, you got it. Dismiss it every time. My father has this thing. He says the five-second rule. Don't let it, don't dwell on it for no more than five seconds. Get it out your mind. Don't dwell on it. So whatever that may be. So let's just go into this new year with a new mind, right? I know people make New Year's resolutions and and, um, and that if that's what you do, then hey, that's what you do. Um, we make, uh, well, I'm going to do this one different. We make promises or whatever. Whatever you do, put God in it, right? Put God in it. And listen, don't, no matter if you, you say, well, I made this thing last year and I didn't stick to it. Here I am again. Guess what? Keep, don't stop, don't stop, don't quit, don't give up, don't ever stop trying to do better, don't ever stop trying to do good, okay? So, and keep speaking it. The more you speak it, it becomes who you are, right? You are what you speak. I think I may have said that in one of my older videos. You are what you speak, you are what you think, because the Bible says the power of death and life lies in the tongue. So, yes, you are what you speak. If you speak negative, guess what you're going to become? That's who you are. But if you speak positive, if we speak life, if we speak victoriously, that's who we are. That's who we become. But we have to practice that thing, right? So, yeah. The other thing I highlighted under here was, um, uh, yes. So, she says, instead of trying to direct me 
to do this and that, talking about God. Instead of trying to direct me to do this and do that, God wants you to do this. Lord, I need you to do that. Lord, I need you to fix this. Lord, I need you to fix this. Lord, I need you here. Lord, I need you there. Lord, Lord, we need, we need, we need, right? Instead of trying to do that, seek to attune yourself to what I'm already doing. Isn't that something? Yeah, sometimes I do that. Sometimes when I get on my knees to pray or when I get ready to talk to the Lord, there are some days where I'm just like, Lord, you know what? I don't even care. I can't even ask you for anything. Because I'm always coming to you asking for something. But Lord, this time, I just want to come to you and just say thank you. Thank you. No particular reason. I'm not asking you for anything, God. Yeah, there's always plenty I can ask for. But Lord, today, I just want to say, you know what? Thank you for what you're doing in my life. Thank you for who you are in my life. Thank you. Even if you're in a bad situation, even if you're in trouble right now, just saying, because the Bible tells us in all things, give thanks. Well, why would I give thanks in a, in a bad situation? Well, that sounds crazy, right? Why am I thanking you for a bad situation? Well, the Lord says, because my word also says, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. So, Lord, I'm thanking you that even in my bad situation, I'm thanking you because some good going to come out of it. Because your word can't lie. So, that's why I'm giving you thanks in all things. Because all things work together for good. If you believe it. Right? You got to believe it. So, there are some days where instead of me trying to say, Lord, can you do this today? Lord, I'm coming to you because I need this done today. How about, Lord... Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate you, God. How often do we say, I appreciate you, Lord? Right? He likes to be appreciated too, right? That's why he says, I won't share my glory with nobody. <laughs> All praise is due to him. And the last thing I highlighted in here was, um, or two more things. The other thing was, when anxiety attempts to wedge its way into your thoughts, remind yourself, that I am your shepherd. Listen, anxiety comes. It's, listen, it comes like a flood sometimes. That's when you take that moment and just calm, musa. <laughs> Relax, relate, release. That's when you take that moment to just take a step back and say, mm -mm, Lord, you got it. You are my shepherd. That means you, you lead me. You guide me. You, you saw whatever situation came to me before it even got to me. So that means you already had the way you worked out. So I'm not going to let myself become all anxious. But what I am going to do, God, is rest in you. Because you got this. My mother was famous for saying, don't worry about it. Me and the Lord got this. So that's what we're going to say in this new year. Lord, you got it. Me and the Lord got this, right? And we're going to smile and keep it moving. And we're going to speak life this year. Thank you, Jesus. All right, last thing I highlighted. Rather than trying to maintain control over your life, abandon yourself to my will. I already, already shared that with you. Though this may feel frightening, even dangerous, the safest place to be is in my will. Be in the will of the Lord. Be intentionally in his will. Because guess what? Your will is always going to try to... Uh, be ahead of God's will, right? Because we're in this flesh. And the Bible teaches us that the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit wars against the flesh. There's a fight going on. There's a tug of war going on, one against the other. Well, who's going to win? Who am I going to let win? Well, I have to be intentional about that thing because my flesh wants to win, but the whole the spirit of God also wants to win, desires to lead us and take charge and take control. So we have the free will. So what we have the free will to do is say, you know what, God? Do just like Jesus did. Let your will be done. And it was saying how it may even be frightening and even dangerous. Listen, don't nobody know that better than Jesus. When he was about to go to the cross, and that night when he prayed until the, his, the sweat fell like drops of blood, don't nobody know better than Jesus what danger is and how fearful it is when you're up against trials and tribulations. Yeah, Jesus still, though, said at that moment, he said, Lord, if, you, if it be your will, let this cup pass. That was his fear talking. 
That was the flesh talking. That was the anxiety talking. That was the, oh my God, I'm about to give my life for these heathens. I'm about to give my life on the cross for some people that can't stand me. I'm about to give my life on the cross for people that sold me out. When all I wanted to do was love them. When all I tried to do was help them and be their friend. And I'm about to give my life for these people. Can you imagine the anxiety that was setting in him at that moment? But nevertheless, in that split second, he said, nevertheless, your Lord, not my will. Your will be done. We have to do that. We have to have a nevertheless moment, a Jesus nevertheless moment. And just say, you know what, God, I'm going to learn to rest in you. I'm not going to walk in fear, but I'm going to walk in faith. And I'm going to give it over to you. I'm going to give my will. I'm going to surrender my will to your will. Whatever that may be. Listen, if you're still living in sin and you have not surrendered your life to Christ yet, that can be a scary thing. Because if you've been living in sin for the majority of your, li of, of your life, you only know one way. Change is scary. Now you're telling, now, you, now, now you have somebody like me telling you, surrender your life to Christ and let him take charge. And you don't know what that entails because you've been used, you've been used to being in control all your life. And now you have to surrender control to somebody else, let alone somebody else, but somebody you can't even see. <laughs> it's called faith. And listen, he is a God that is very present, very present, very present. You can't see him, but he's so present. He's so real. So I encourage you and I challenge you out there. Uh, if you don't know him as your savior, take this year to make that change. Take this year to do something new and surrender your life to Christ. You won't be sorry. And then grow in grace. And when you surrender your life, it's just simple. Lord, I, I, I surrender my will. I surrender my life to you, Lord. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you was raised from the grave. I believe that you hung on the cross. When you believe, he says, you know what? You can be one of mine. So do that and surrender your life to him. And watch, you will be amazed at how much your life will be so blessed and so full, right? And once you do that, find you a church home with a pastor that loves the Lord, that loves the truth, that believes the truth, teaches the gospel truth, and follow those that are calling on the Lord out of a pure heart. That doesn't mean we're perfect, but a pure heart that's striving to live a life that's pleasing to God. That's what we want. That's what God is looking for. All right, my friends, I want to thank you for coming back. I missed you guys. Happy New Year and Happy New Year's again. And I do hope and pray that you will have a wonderful, blessed year in this 2022. Seek out your goals and aspirations. Speak life out of your mouth, right? Like God, he said, the Lord said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Speak abundant life from your own mouth. Watch and watch God and walk in it. Walk in faith. I don't care how scary it looks. Walk in faith. Believe God. Ain't nothing too scary for God. Ain't nothing scary for God. Put your trust and your faith in him, knowing that he's leading you, knowing that he will guide you every step of the way. All right, my friends. Thank you so much. Love you guys. And I will look to see you again on Wednesdays. I'm back um, on my channel. Six o'clock, I will upload a new video, hopefully. Uh, if you don't see me uh, with a video uploaded at six o'clock, it may be running late. It may be in seven. But if you click the bell, subscribe to this channel, click the bell, then you'll be notified. Click all and you'll be notified of every video that I upload. Share this channel with somebody in this new year. There's uh, so many people that don't know the Lord. Um, there's so many people that need to be encouraged in the Lord. There's so many people that used to go to church and they no longer go uh, for whatever reason, you know. Um, share this with them. We're in the digital age. We're in the digital era. We're in the social media era. Uh, and it's not going anywhere. So share this channel with somebody. Share it with a friend um, so that we can all grow in grace together and we can uh, be all a part of the body of Christ together on a YouTube channel. All right, my friends. Take care, and as always, I am blessed, you are blessed. We are so, so blessed. Until next time, see ya. Take care.